Welcome back to another episode of Positively Uncensored. Today, I'm so excited because I'm joined by the Alex Bird. Okay, I've been rocking with you since day one. I'm a fan of your fashion. I saw your heart. And ever since I saw what your full name was, I was dying to use SZA's Pretty Little Bird song to like debut an episode. So that was like part of it. Oh my God, I love this song. (laughs) <laughs> so do I. And I was like, uh, that's going to be her song when I launch our episode. But thank you for joining me. <laughs> thank you for having me. I've been such a fan for so long. <laughs> that's like, um, you said that you had heard of me prior, right? My podcast. Yes. Mm-hmm. That shocked me. Like that really shocked me just because I had no intention. Like I feel very small. Like I feel like really, you know, like no. few people know. No, I liked your... Um... Uh, interviews that you did with um, uh, Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. Uh, yeah, I saw all of them. Uh, I I loved those. And yeah, I've just been like, I, I like your perspective on a lot of them because you don't just kind of go with the general public and what they're thinking. You actually really take both sides and really try to dive deep. And you're like, okay, she gets it. <laughs> That is so kind. That's one of the nicest compliments. And I was just like floored that you had heard of me and that you enjoyed my content and made me feel really good. So that comment like stuck with me all season. Yeah, um, I did. <laughs> I'm glad that you checked me out. It's also crazy because I think Preston from Summer House Martha's Vineyard lives in DC. Yes, that's what I heard too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you in DC? Because I know I everyone lives various areas. When we filmed, I was in DC, but I'm in Maryland right now. Okay, got it. So born and raised Maryland? Yes, yeah, Silver Spring. So um, I wanted to check in with you before we get into the show, um, all of the stuff pertaining to Love is Blind. The election has just ended. Me personally, it's brought up a lot of anxiety. But I was thinking about you and I was like, oh my gosh, like, you're processing that you're close to dc also you're processing the reunion and everything online so i just want to check in with you and how you're doing um yeah i appreciate you asking i i'm good um better than where and I it's was. okay to not be okay let's start yeah. with that no it one def- has to be it okay. definitely is um you know i think everyone can agree this was probably the most important election we've really had to date um and one thing i've noticed about this particular election is that, you know, in past, of course, Democrat, Republican, I can still, you know, talk to somebody of the opposing side and as if like, okay, that's what they voted for. But now there's been so much hatred from other people like, oh, you voted for this person. I can never talk to you again. And I don't think it's ever been like that. And to, you know, have all this pressure on which way it was going to go. I think it was just kind of um, upsetting to see how big of a difference the election was. I knew it was going to be close. I think we all knew it was going to be close. I didn't know it was going to be, like, I didn't know he was going to win by that much. I did not see that coming at all. And it was kind of disappointing. And one thing that I've noticed Mm -hmm. is that, you know, everybody usually is very um, private about their political um, voting, whoever they're going to vote for, whatnot. But it was just very interesting. As soon as he won, a lot of people that I never knew supported Trump came out of nowhere and were proudly. And of course, you should be proud with whoever you want to stand with. I'm, I'm not saying that, but it was just you were so hidden this entire time. And now you're just Trump, Trump, Trump. And I'm like, where was this? Why, why, did, why did you feel like you needed to hide that? Um, and I think that's an important question to ask. But, um, you know, I I come from a very uh, heavy political family. My uh, stepmother used to work for Bill Clinton in office. And I we used to watch Meet the Press every Sunday. So every election, I go to my, my dad and my stepmom's house. And I was there for two days just because... It's it, it's just scary. And then also you're being in this area, you know, it's it's a lot. And I remember even that day going outside, nobody was outside. I think everybody was just on edge on like how this is going to go. But um, it's unfortunate how it went. Um, it is, you know, it is what it is. But I will say she ran one hell of a campaign for only having 100 days. One Absolutely. hell of a campaign. And I think... We need to also give her grace with that. Um, 
I think the country just kind of answered it. They're not ready for a, a woman, especially a woman of color, a black woman to be in office. And that yeah. that was that was spoken. And I like what you said too. Like it really revealed, unfortunately, a lot of people's uh, politics, moral compass, and that there's a lot of silent soldiers out there who may act like in our you know, people's face that they're friends with and that they love, like they have the same viewpoints while harboring, you know, I actually completely disagree with everything that you're saying fundamentally, mm -hmm. and I'm going to vote against you. Yeah. So that's, that's been really interesting for me to see as well. So it's interesting that that's on your social media, which would make me believe that maybe that's an experience a lot of us are having right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank yeah. you for speaking about it. I've been so defeated yeah. and like I yeah. really felt for people who work in office with no choice as to call the day off, especially people who work with very um, conservative folks who are excited about the the results. I mean, I, I grieved for those people as well, having to just go forcibly out so quickly with no time to process. Yeah, I definitely took off work. I took off work really? no matter what <laughs> the, the outcome was going to be because... It's just either I'm going to want to celebrate all, all day or I'm just going to want to stay in the house and process what just happened. So I am so glad that you took the space for that. Of course. Um, one thing I wanted to know as well, prior to filming this this season of D.C., there was tons of chatter online about how. The dating pool in D.C. was pits. And so I'm, I'm curious if after you've seen this season, is it an accurate representation of the dating pool? A thousand percent. And everyone who has said, oh, this was a terrible season, or this is how, you know, th this season went this way or this or that way. And everyone who's from here is like, this is exactly what it looks like to date in DC. There, And we have people that, and I'm not speaking on anyone's particular relationship, but you have people who are not fully honest on who they are, or you have people who live at home and think they're this when they're not, and and no shade to Nick on that, it happens. But, you know, or you have um, people who, you know, you to come from the politi very political background where, you know, how Monica and Steven talking about politics is a big thing in this area. Or, you know, you, you just have very fluid individuals. So it's like, it's so many different characters. And you also have to, take into um, consideration that this is a very transplant area now. It didn't used to be, but it is now. Um, a lot of gentrification has happened in the last 20 years. Um, and so there's a lot of people that are coming here for more opportunity. It's a great place to raise a family. It's a great place to you know have a steady income. Whenever there is um, any type of issue with unemployment, we don't really see that. You know, we don't really get the effects of that because DC is always covered. So everybody comes here. And with that, you have so many different personalities and people from different ways of life. So this is, that is DC dating. Thousand percent. Are you, I, I feel like I, I heard a conversation. There's been so many podcasts I've been trying to keep up with. So I don't ask you repetitive questions, but I feel like at one point you've expressed that you and your friends may have joked around about how your husband is not in DC. Yeah. Okay, so are we are we sold on that idea now? Yeah, I'm completely sold. I don't think he's here. He's not here. I don't think I'll he's tell here. you, he's not. <laughs> Unless I've already met him. But um, yeah, I don't think he's here. <laughs> I'm so glad that it's like, okay, so on to the next state, which would be like, what's close? Maryland, Virginia. Is that still technically DC? Is that too close for home? Oh, don't let a DC, don't say that to a DC person. If you say Maryland is DC, they'll come for you, especially Virginia. Um, No, DMV, but it's all individual. So Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe Maryland. <laughs> okay. I like it. I like that Maryland, you've got a little bit of a better chance at not getting DC dating. I want to start here. Before this episode, I thought it would be fun, maybe for myself, maybe for you, maybe for viewers. But I went back and read your bio that we were given at the beginning of the season. And then I read Tim's. And I was like, are they compatible? And I had some thoughts. So I thought I, I, thought I would read them to you and kind of get your take. Okay. Um, and I'll kind of skim over some things. But um, you pride yourself on being easy to talk to and getting along with just about anyone. Yes. Little did we know that 
just about anyone is not Tim. Um, reflecting on her past, she admits that she was drawn to people who didn't prioritize her well-being and lacked boundaries. However, you remained hopeful about finding love with a tall, confident man who leads with compassion. Mm -hmm. Now, do you feel like your summary accurately portrayed you and what you were looking for? Somewhat, yes. Um, the get along with everyone... I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of people that I, I can literally be put anywhere and I can blend in because I don't know. I just feel like I can talk to anybody about anything. Um, I feel like it was pretty accurate. I just feel like it was a very surface description. It didn't go into the depths of why I was really there. Um, I had been through a lot of heartbreak and I wanted to try something different, but there was just more that I experienced in past relationships that made me take this route. Got it. So you are going into this relationship and whether Tim acknowledged it or not, but you have also had your own set of entire experiences with other relationships that have put you in a position to communicate how you do protect yourself in a certain way or just move through relationships um, in a certain way. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, Tim, I thought that it was interesting that you said you want someone who leads with compassion because do you think that Tim in retrospect leads with compassion? No. <laughs> okay. Cause you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put that impression on him, but how it looks like how he spoke to you was more yeah. patronizing if I were to use an adjective. Yes. It was very strict. <laughs> very, very strict. Very strict. First of all, he says he's direct and transparent to a fault, which... Mm -hmm probably true very true very okay. true. accurate on that mm -hmm. very heavy so he seeks a confident yeah. black woman who values clear communication do you think that he was really after that no um and that was something that we struggled with uh he had led with that in the pods i will say that and i think where we went wrong or we were blinded is in the pods all you're doing is talking so I'm a great listener, but also I can talk too. And I think all we did was talk, 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 talk about like what he wants, what I want, his past life, my past life. And unfortunately, you guys didn't get to see a lot that I shared because I did share a lot with him too. He did let me speak on a few things. Um, but it, I feel like it's easier to kind of sell a story and then what you want and what you think is good for you. And then once we got out, it was like, but I'm not really there yet. I haven't done the work to receive something like that. So I think that's where we, you know, clashed on. I can see that. And he said another thing in his bio, which was he referred to himself as an old soul. Mm -hmm. And while that aspect may be very true, because very he does true. speak like an old soul, mm -hmm. I think a lot of men who describe themselves as old souls, because they're old souls, they also possess this sort of tr very traditional um, view of marriage, where they have, you're my wife, you know, you're going to make me feel better, comfort me, nurture me all that stuff. And then I'm going to go out and be the protector of X, Y, Z. Um, do you feel like that's how it was in the relationship? Yeah. Um, I think Tim wanted, um, allegedly how he says, uh, he wanted a woman like me, but I think what he was used to and how he was raised and what he's just experienced was a very traditional life, a, a traditional wife, a very docile woman. One of the things that wasn't shown was when I met his friends. And when I met his friends, one of the first questions I asked was like, can you tell me about his exes? Because what is he used to? I, he claims he's never had a woman like me, but what is the type of woman that he has been, you know, dealing with? And what was a little alarming was his best friend said, all of the women saw him as their world. They didn't really have anything but him. So... I was just kind of like, you know, I, of course, will do anything and submit to my husband. However, I do have my own life and world as well. And I don't want you to think that I'm not going to be anything but you. Like, I, I also am Alex and Alex has her own friends and Alex has her own family and I don't in her own career. And I don't think he was he was uh, prepared for that. And a couple of things, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting a traditional sense and, mm -hmm. and make that clear to your partner. And if you find yeah. a woman who is comfortable with that, 
do it. Don't clip someone else's wings who has a lot of freedom for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, another point that you brought up was that you really aren't opposed to being submissive to your husband. And right. I saw some comments on my TikTok. So I'm glad that you mentioned that because I, I was curious. Um, like some people had the perception that you are a woman who would be submissive to her husband and let him lead, not submissive in an abusive way, but let right. him lead. Okay. Um, if you were given the safety and security to feel like you could. So mm -hmm. did you have the security and safety to be submissive? No. And that's why I could not get into that position or headspace with him because I felt like my defenses were literally always up. Um, I honestly felt like I was walking on eggshells most of the relationship because going into meeting each other for the first time face to face, um, the first night in Mexico, you know, off camera, he had said to me, I just want you to know, I'm not myself right now. Um, I'm still getting adjusted to all these cameras. I haven't been home. Just bear with me. So I gave him a lot of grace and I put up with a lot of stuff because I was still trying to give him that, you know, time to get readjusted because I honestly felt, and a lot of other people felt this person who was in the pause is not the same person. Even the guys had said it. Some of the girls had said it. They're like, we all dated him. This is not the same Tim. And I said, he says he's just not himself. So, um, I don't know if he was, if it was a performance or if, if he just felt to be different, um, in the pods than he was in real life. But, I, he was always aware of who I was and, you know, I do cook and I do clean and everyone says I don't, but I do, but it wasn't even a time where he wanted to even go to the grocery store with me so we could learn what do we like to eat? What does that look like? How do you want your meals prepared? How, and it was just, oh, let's go out tonight. Oh, we can just door dash or we can do this. So I didn't feel like I could really be putting up space with him because it still felt very casual, I guess. And he was just like, if, if I didn't get something right, it was just, it turned into an argument. And I don't know, that was a communication barrier we would have. Okay. So you guys had, you guys had different communication styles in For the sure. experience. Mm -hmm. What is your communication style? So I always say like, he's type A, I'm type B. Got I can be a little lax the days ago with some, certain things just because I feel like my energy needs to be pushed on other things. I have so much going on and I don't, if I give too much something of a certain amount of energy, I don't want it to be bigger than what it is. That's why you see me saying, if we're talking about dishes, if we're talking about the tra trash or text message or whatever, like that is something so little to me that could easily be communicated. But when there's other stuff like you know, family and work, stuff that I have to put my energy towards. I'm going to give it that. Um, but we definitely had communication issues from probably day two of the minute after our argument. Um, we had actually had a conversation, me and him. And he said, do you feel like we're compatible? And I said, I do feel like we're compatible. I just feel like we have a communication barrier that we need to adjust to. But I feel like I'm the only one compromising and I need you to try to compromise for me. And we have to learn. Because Tim's not a bad person. Right. I just think he's just used to a certain style and, but he doesn't budge at all. Mm -hmm. I yeah. budge, but I, I'll budge the point of where now I'm not myself mm. and now I'm exhausted. And now that's why when you saw me at the breakup scene, I was just kind of over it at that point. We had argued so much every day and it would just be over something so little every time. And when it could just be, uh, uh, we just could have just talked about it. Um, so it would just blow up every time. <laughs> um, I really felt so much empathy for you this entire experience because, and I want to say, I do feel a lot. I felt, I feel empathy for Tim as well. I fully believe him that he didn't feel like himself. The presence mm -hmm. of cameras, adding somebody into your life, potentially feeling misunderstood at every corner as each of you did. However, yep. he handled it differently than you. You touched on the fact that other people felt like he was different. Mm -hmm. um, what, was, what, what was the difference? So, so they, the guys say he was so much fun in the pods. He was, they were always joking. They were always having like just so much fun. And then with me and him, he was playful and he was, but he was really, really, really sweet. And I just felt like he was like a big teddy bear, 
But then when I met him and then we're interacting, I was like, oh, you really are a military guy. Like I didn't get military. I knew he was in the Navy. I knew he had gone to war, but I did not get military in the pods at all. So in the pods, as you're as you're talking to Tim, who was your other connection, if you don't mind sharing? Tyler and then um, a little bit Tamar at the end, but it was really Tyler. And they always joked with us because it was Ashley Alex, Tyler Tim, and that's the A's and the T's. And so people would get confused and I'm like, how is this happening? <laughs> I, okay, so you, what, what made you go with Tim? I didn't get on a deep level with Tyler. It was always fun. Like we, me and Tyler would laugh. Like he's really funny. We would just laugh and joke in the pods every time we talked, but then that was it. And I remember one date we had, I was like, oh yeah, I talked about you to my producer today. And he's like, oh, what did you say? I was like, I said, I really like you, but we just don't get there. And he was like, yeah, we don't. And that was the last time I saw him. You're right. Yeah. Like, mm, okay. You're like, okay, so that's out. Um, done here. <laughs> at least you were saved the like whole like love triangle like situation, you know, that Lilio, Brittany, Hannah, that mess. It's so funny. So you mentioned that you and Tim had disagreements since day two. And that was actually one of my questions because I wanted mm-hmm. to get to Mexico next because yeah. that seemed like the canon event. But yeah. finding out that you guys have had other disagreements when you had those, do you feel like you were given space or like were your boundaries respected during those disagreements? No. And even when I've explained this, I feel like people still took it a different way. And so I kind of actually do want to like clear the air on that as well. So when it came to Mexico, yes, I had my own reservations about like family, but regardless, I'm, as you saw, I'm very close to my family. And my dad and I talk every day. So going into like day 15, 16, whatever, not speaking to him was weighing on me. And then of course people, you know, have been drinking and partying and it's just like your emotions just are heavier at that point. But when I got to the hotel room, I had explained like, it's not you. I just want to go take a shower and go to bed. That literally was not good enough. And I don't know who else thinks that's not good enough. But unfortunately, like that just wasn't good enough for him at the moment. And it wasn't him just saying, oh, I was trying to love you. And I was trying to be there. He was not supportive. In that moment, he led with yelling, like led with aggression and led with his hand, like in my face, you're going to talk to me. You're going to tell me what's wrong with, with you. What's, why are you upset? Who said something to you? And when you saw that, I said, um, you know, he thought I was calling him insecure. I had said, you're projecting your own insecurities onto me because he had literally said, who said something to you? What did they say about me? And I'm like, nobody said anything about you. This has nothing to do with you. And it just kept intensifying and intensifying. And I don't think, like, I don't think it's also an excuse to say my voice carries because it's kind of just you trying to gloss over the fact or give yourself um, the the privilege or the okay to raise your voice when it's not okay. Your volume is not okay. Your demeanor is not okay. It is not appropriate. You are being very offensive. And I did not felt, feel safe in that moment. And not saying I felt, I didn't feel like he would do something physical. I just didn't feel safe to even open up to him because now I'm being yelled at. So, right. And as all of this is happening, cameras are outside of your room and you're not wanting things to get to them and be recorded, correct? So it was my two producers that were outside. I didn't want them to go bring cameras. We didn't have cameras exactly outside of our room. We had two producers and they were waiting on us to give them our phone back. And I could not calm down. I was like, I can't even open the door because you're yelling and I need you to calm down before I go back out there. And they were literally just waiting and I didn't know how thin the walls were. Like we're in the bathroom of our hotel and they're outside of our hotel room. And he was yelling that loud that I felt like they could hear him. Um, so, yeah, no, I just didn't want the cameras to potentially be a thing. And you've already mentioned, you know, like you've had relationships in the past. Everybody has their own, their own um, things that come up in relationships. And, and it may just be, you know, uh, I, I don't feel safe either communicating myself or otherwise when someone's tone outweighs mine mm-hmm. or when there's not a lapse in space in the air for me mm-hmm. to respond. You just feel wildly misunderstood. Yeah. Um, 
And this started because I think you said on another platform, you were all, all that happened was you were emotional missing your parents. You were feeling the same emotions that Marissa was feeling about Ramses towards Tim. Mm -hmm. And you just really wanted the space um, for yourself. And I mm -hmm. feel like you, I feel like I'm very similar. So please correct me if I'm misunderstanding, mm -hmm. but I'm the type of person where when I can't best communicate myself, I'd rather take some time mm -hmm. because I'm so emotional that perhaps what I'm feeling may not be articulated well. Um, mm -hmm. and that's a good enough reason to just not want to have a conversation in that moment. Yeah. Over the years, I've been the type who has what you say word vomit and I one of my my boundaries that I have with myself is if I'm in a very emotional space I do not speak ex like immediately because I don't want to speak out of emotion and say something that is just coming simply from emotion and not logic I didn't want to say anything that would be offensive or even just I always like to take time to process and just take a moment and at that moment, I didn't want to lash out on him because I'm upset when it literally had nothing to do with him. So I, that's why I'm just like, I need a second. And that's all I needed. And I, I wasn't granted that. Um, but. And had he ever communicated to you, like, because we all carry our traumas. So like, had, yeah. had, had he ever communicated to you at any point when we drop a conversation, it makes me feel abandoned or had anything ever been communicated behind the scenes that may explain why he can't drop something? No, none that we hadn't gotten that far yet. Um, Got where it. we had to deal with adversity and how we handle it, what happens, stuff like that. I guess we just had to go through it absolutely, um, and see in the moment. But I know for me, my one thing that I did have with us is I would always tell him like, I don't want to go to bed angry. So I knew I was going to talk to him before, but that was the one rule I had. I said, I just don't want us to go to bed angry with each other. And for about like <laughs> eight nights that we were together, we went to bed angry and I don't know. Um, I, I felt, I just felt like in my, in that relationship, my boundaries and my what I wanted out of it were never really fully respected. And I just felt like I was losing myself. And I feel like this is important to clarify for anyone who's listening, because so in Mexico, that's when you, that's when your boundaries were completely disregarded. But in other disagreements, was the communication style the same, him not dropping a conversation? Or did you also like, did you have that feeling more times than just Mexico prior? Like just him not speaking or something? Yeah. Yeah. Like shutting you down yeah. or pr pushing a conversation when you're not able to. Mm -hmm. um, it happened a few times. Um, one conversation we had in particular, I remember we were filming, I think it was the last day in Mexico. And when we were filming, he whispered in my ear, he's like, oh, remind me to tell you something when we're done. And I was like, okay. And then when the cameras left, we're just on the couch, just like relaxing. And he was like, oh, I forgot to tell you. Um, I didn't like that you made fun of me about not knowing how to open up a beer bottle. And I was just like, I'm a bartender. It was, it was just a joke. I, I don't actually think you can open a beer bottle, but I'm, I'm literally a bartender, like 10 years in the game. And so I don't know. And so he was just like, well, you would like to embarrass me. And I'm like, I really wasn't trying to. And that turned into you're not listening. And I'm like, I'm trying to just understand why you thought that. And how we can adjust moving forward because my humor, if you don't like my humor, that's also going to be kind of an issue because I also don't want to offend you, but what do I have to change? And he kind of took that as you're not listening to me and you just have to understand that if I say this, this is how it goes. If I say I'm upset about it, I'm upset about it and leave it at that. Can't really be a discussion. And that's kind of how he handled a lot of things, which was if I'm upset. I'm going to tell you I'm upset. You say you're sorry and move on. No dissecting it. No understanding what made you upset. No just understanding the whole thing as a whole. It was just, that's it. And that's, I, I like to talk things out. I like to have a better yeah. understanding. And so that's where we clashed a lot. So it's, is it, you know, I like, I want to be completely fair to Tim as I do this, because I, I yeah. really think that vocabulary is important, but I want to ask the, some of the, the things that bothered Tim. You calling him a bitch, 
Okay. In in a comment. The comment he made at the at the reunion. Mm-hmm. Um, y'all women want someone to treat you take you so seriously. Yeah. Um, that was interesting. Yeah. It it, it kind of seems like Tim was very easily emasculated. Mm-hmm. And I wanna know if you feel like you were almost unable to express yourself because you need to sort of not stroke his masculinity, but I don't even know what other phrase. Stroke his ego. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's literally what it was. Um, Mm -hmm. I learned that later, like throughout dating him that, okay, this is something deeper than me. If I called him something else, I don't think he would have reacted like that, but calling him that and, you know, him saying y'all, y'all, you were talking to me, who is y'all? So it was just like, it seemed like he was dealing with this with women a lot. Like, this isn't the first time he's experienced this in a relationship. I, I sort of had that impression, too. So thank you for clearing that up, because mm-hmm. I it, it's just something that I sort of noticed. Yeah. And But mm-hmm. I think it's fair to say it came off very misogynistic when you add all yeah. of the comments kind of yeah. together. Yeah. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, even with the reunion, I was really, really looking for clarity, because I think we can all agree it is not because of an app. I did not get broken up because of an app. Like... It was clearly a level of of amount of things. And then that was, you know, he just wanted out. But I just, I don't know. I just feel like there was something else deeper that he was dealing with. And I mean, I had even said to him, you know, and not to bring up, you know, what he had went through. And it's really unfortunate, you know, the passing of his sisters. But one of his sisters uh, passed that May. So... I think he was also still healing and grieving with that. And I don't think he was aware of it. Um, And that was something that we touched on that he completely pushed out the idea of him still grieving. Oh, I'm fine. Right. It was just really hard to um, work with that when I'm being shut down every time I ask or trying to get through, try to understand um, when like just talking to him. It sounds like you tried to have a lot of grace and you mentioned something earlier. You mentioned something earlier where you almost felt like depleted after trying so hard Mm -hmm. to make this relationship work. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions that I had later, one of the phrases you kept saying was you were committed to seeing this process out to the end. Mm -hmm. And it made me wonder if you're typically someone who gives this much grace Mm -hmm. and potentially falls into like overextending themselves to support their partner. Do you feel like that's, that has happened before? Yeah. Okay. Every relationship. Um, I am very empathetic, but also I'm, I try to just give people the benefit of doubt too many times. That is one of my negative traits is I, I see it like as a positive and a negative because it gets me in these situations that unfortunately hurt me. Um, I did not, with, with him, I did not think the experiment was long enough. So that's why I wanted to see it all the way through because I'm still learning him every day. I mean, I was going to still be learning him if we got married every day, but up until the wedding, there was still so much that I hadn't been able to get an answer for. So I didn't think it was fair for me to shut it down immediately. Um, still so early in the process when we still had three weeks left. Um, but with a lot of relationships, yes, I give people the benefit of the doubt too many times and try to give people grace just because people are human. They make mistakes. Sometimes intentions aren't what they are seen as. So I just, I just try to give people. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I'm the same way. So like, I can relate to you. I'm the, I'm the, I'm absolutely the same way. Mm-hmm. And it's like, sometimes you do fall into these positions where you're hurt or I, this, the place where I'm at now is I've gone to the other side and mm-hmm. I've formed these very rigid boundaries where unfortunately, if you hurt me a little bit, you might as well have hurt me a lot because mm-hmm. that, that, that is a warning sign to me that you are now not a safe person to me. Yeah. You know, so I, I've seen both sides of that, but I just wanted to validate that, first of all, it's it's nothing but compassionate of you, how you went through this entire experience. So mm-hmm. I hope that you don't feel humiliated. I hope you don't regret how you moved through the experience because looking at you, I think that you are just the, the kindest and most gracious person. And there's nothing wrong with being a good person. It We should always hold others accountable who take advantage of our empathy. With that being said, I hope that in future relationships, 
for your own safety that or for your not even safety but for your own um like mental health like i just hope that you have someone who values you so much that you yeah. never have to compromise yourself yeah that's def thank you for that um i appreciate your kind words on that um yeah that's that's what i'm looking for the main thing now is someone who holds an immense amount of compassion and yes. you know protection of not I can physically protect or like protect my heart and just be very gracious on on you know me and our relationship and just compassionate and you will get that I know um, that you will that that will come to you um I jumping back really quickly yeah. when Tim when Tim alluded to the fact that things are physical mm -hmm. I'm I'm curious like, how did you interpret that? Were you more confused or hurt with the reality of the situation? That, like, even now, makes me really upset. Um, only because, first things first, as we know, it did not get physical. Right. And it even got to the point where my job was even questioning me. They know me. They know who I am. But the fact that even my own place of business, like, where I work is questioning my integrity, questioning me as a person. And, you know, I don't know if you've seen, but Tim has had his fair share of share oversharing on Instagram with yep. posting our personal text messages and writing paragraph after paragraph after paragraph on his experience. And I just found it kind of alarming and very hurtful that out of him going to the reunion and wanting to say, I'm a six foot, 225 black man and wanting to make sure he doesn't look aggressive, you were very quick to make me look aggressive. Even though at the reunion, you shut it down, but you had all this time to shut it down. You saw how I was getting dragged online. You saw how people were attacking me and saying I was um, abusive. I mean, he made posts saying, oh, I protect all of... Uh, I think 29 of us, you know, I don't play about the 29 people from this show and, you know, don't try to cyber bully people. But in that moment, I needed him to be very specific. Alex is not abusive, period. And I just needed that to be said. And it's unfortunate that I had to say it and clear my name for him to acknowledge it. Um, so, yeah, that was absolutely. You you touched on something too that and and it was actually the next thing I wanted to talk about, which was yeah. initially one of the things I loved about Tim was his social media presence and how outspoken mm -hmm. he was specifically around the language that we use and how important it is when when talking about black men, black women, mm -hmm. to not use vocabulary mm -hmm. that attaches false stereotypes. Mm -hmm. So then to fast forward and see what felt like potentially a lack of care in mm -hmm. how he described you. Yeah. It was, it, it was just very, it was just very disheartening. Like all, all I can say is that I extend so much empathy for you and I am a warrior on TikTok with the videos in the comments. <laughs> don't, th don't talk about Alex. Like, so like, you know, I'm, <sighs> I'm here to say like, I, I just think that that's very unfortunate because yeah. <laughs> it, it really didn't feel fair. It felt like you were very conscious to the point where your only intention, like if you weren't so cautious of protecting him, you wouldn't have motioned to deescalate the conversation. It would have been, okay, let's just keep going. Okay. Yeah. But you, you tried to minimize that conversation and it ended up being used against you. And that's why I didn't even like that he had said it again um, because him and Tyler had a whole conversation a couple days later about how I protect him so much and he loves that I protect him. And so for him to just be so oblivious and now just, okay, yeah, people are saying you, you abuse me or whatever. And, but let me just write a paragraph about this, but that is, you can say whatever you want about me, but that I need to be very clear. Like, Call, call me on my name. I don't care. Say I mean, I don't care. I like I, one thing I'm not as abusive. I've never gotten to a fight a day in my life. And so for even my friends and family to know that that was what has been manipulated in turn was very shocking because they're like, of all the things, that's not you. And why isn't Tim saying anything? And so 
I'm just happy he at least said something at the reunion, but I just would have appreciated if he had said something prior since he was very vocal on social media and after when he was posting more tech personal text messages. So I just wanted accountability Absolutely. and I took accountability with him and I've tried to take accountability multiple times, but we could never even really get far in our conversation without, but this happened. The facts are the facts. This is what happened. And I'll take, okay, yeah, I didn't show up to your, to meet up with your family with flowers. And I did have my hand in my pocket, but, and that probably wasn't the best. But one thing that also wasn't said was I asked him, what do your parents like? Should I bring them anything? And he said, do not bring them anything. Don't bring my mother flowers. Don't bring my, my father liquor. Don't just show up as you are. I should have probably not listened to him and because usually you shouldn't listen to men on stuff like that. But I, yeah. I, I didn't. And I did exactly what he said. And yeah, I, I, I showed up the way that I did, but I genuinely was hurt because of the conversation that we had before. And I personally did not want to be there because I did not want to bring another family in this if we were going to break up, which is when we broke up a day later, I'm just like, then why did we do all of this? That's why like when someone tells you, different? don't buy me a birthday gift. And then they're mad. You right. know what I mean? That's like, like, listen, and, I should, and, and I'll take it. I'll take full accountability on like, yeah, I shouldn't have showed up like that. But honestly, I just didn't want to be there at all. I and that's it. fair. And that's completely fair. And I also think that there's something to be said that when someone tells you how to approach their family, you mm -hmm. don't want to come across like you're doing too much. You don't want to make right. them uncomfortable. Right. Maybe they hate flowers. Right. I have no idea. Maybe they attach flowers to something negative, or maybe they just don't like them. Or maybe he really would just rather you show up. So this, this thing that women have to do where they always have to spot people's true needs underneath mm -hmm. is, is so draining. So I rebuke mm -hmm. that for you. Yeah. If you're told to show up as is, I mean, church tells you that you show up as is, you know? Yeah. I mean, and that's why he did such a phenomenal job with my family because I talked him through it. I said, right. this is my family. If you want to cook, cause that was his idea. We were going to go to a restaurant, but he wanted to show his grill master skills. And I love a man that grills. So I was not knocking it. Um, but I said, my brothers, they eat steak. My mother and I do not eat red meat. So we're going to do chicken. And he's like, I'll prep everything. I'll set everything up. I'll, you know, do the whole shebang. Cause I want to look good. Cool. This is how we're going to handle it. We're going to make sure you don't, you know, stand up in certain situations because my father can barely walk and we're going to do this. Like I communicated. He did not communicate anything with me on how to show up with his family. I did not know. I was walking in blindly and he also said, don't show up with anything. So I'm like, okay, here I am. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> also, agree. I don't want to be here. <laughs> Exactly. Because that's valid too. You know what I mean? It's not like you can say like, okay, well we can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like, I like, I don't know if you can make a comment, but I didn't like it how Nick at the reunion asked you, um, like why, why did you choose to take a nap after his parents just drove 10 hours? Oh, like, do you, cause you're tired. Like, do you, I'm tired. what if you had iron deficiency? I couldn't even believe the question. And everyone thinks that I don't actually have iron deficiency. Um, okay. I've actually got my blood work done and I'm actually one point above. Um, <laughs> so, cause I've actually thought this before, but no, I just work so much. I'm always doing something. I work remotely. I bartend and we were filming so much and we went to dinner the night before we, we didn't get home until 1 AM. And can I just clear the dishes situation too, while we're at it? Yes. Because, no. Cause I, I need to, um, when this is the timeline we did the family meet up with him and my parents and my brothers from like 12 to four. One, yeah. Like 12 to four. Um, and then we were going to go to dinner at this place called Mibita in um, DC. Uh, I want to say like our reservations were like at eight o'clock. Kid you not right after we both took a nap together. He was like, I'm exhausted. I said, babe, me too. Let's go to bed. And we, we, we took a nap and then we got dressed and I was like, all right, I'm going to do the dishes later because we have, we're going to miss our reservation. We're trying to get dressed um, because we try to sleep in as long as possible. And then we go to dinner and then we have this argument. I'm annoyed. Come back. It's one in the morning. I'm like, I'm not doing the dishes right now. I'm not. Yeah. And he's like, well then fine. I'll do them. I'm like, okay, if you want to do the dishes at one in the morning, that's fine. I'll do them. I was going to do them in the morning, but I'm not doing dishes at one in the morning. And that's, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that he had to clean up, but no. And then and what's your sign? I'm a Leo. And what's his? Virgo. 
And and yeah, you should know they don't. Yeah, I know. I'm fully aware. It's okay. So, keep okay. going. Well, it, it'll buff. It'll buff, right? <laughs> right, right, right. I'm like, okay. are, are we surprised? <laughs> so, and so then the next day when he, well, that night he went to his house and because his parents were coming in and then that's when I met his family the next day. But I also woke up like, I don't want to be here because mm-hmm. we just had this argument and now I'm supposed to just. He's not even here in the morning with me. To was like this the night out. that he said that you were out with your friends? Yeah, at I first? wasn't out. Okay. okay. I went out the night before he met my dad. Okay. And yeah, I did. Because that same night was our friend meetup. You guys didn't meet my friends. But I had not seen my friends in literally three, four weeks. And I was like, babe, I'm sorry. I know we have our parent meetup tomorrow, but I need to go out. I have not seen my girlfriends in a month. I I just, I want to have a girl's night, like bad. And so we went out and then, yeah, I called him at like two in the morning because he's my fiance. Come get me. Like who else is going to come get me? But I end up calling an Uber and bring myself home. So it's fine. (laughs) Okay. Wait, pause because I had this as a question. What did, okay. Did your friends meet him then? Or was this just a friend? What was the thoughts? What happened? Only one friend liked him. None of my friends liked him. Why was there My cousin actually hated him. Yeah. So what I, and again, communicating on how to present yourself also prepped him for that. Hey, you're in my friends. My friends are very vocal. They are very direct, not Hannah direct. (laughs) (laughs) They're very direct and they call it out. My, one of my really good girlfriends, she had um, an ex-boyfriend who was in the military. Um, My cousin and I have known each other literally since my birth. Um, And then I have my two other close girlfriends and they just know me. And they asked all these questions that unfortunately he was not prepared for. And I think in his mind, he kind of had a script Um, because even when my friends watched this, so they're like, he said all that to us. But a lot of the things that he was saying, it wasn't, it just wasn't good for their, their questions. Like, I think one of the questions they had asked was, you know, how do you communicate or, you know, do you go to therapy and, you know, being in, in the, in the Navy, have you ever been to therapy? And he was like, no, I have Alex for that. And I remember I (gasps) looked at him and I was like, what do you, you do? And he was like, yeah, no, I just pour out to my friends and family and, and Alex, but I really just pour a lot into Alex. And so one of my close girlfriends was like, so Alex is really emotional. Who does she get to pour into? And he didn't really have an answer for that. And so I was just like, oh boy, this is not okay. And yeah. they were just like, I don't know. I'm not feeling it. My cousin was like, I don't like, I don't know. My cousin's usually really affectionate. You don't like to be touched. I don't know. Like, I don't know if this is going to work. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm trying. They're like, but you're being so patient. You're trying to understand him. But Alex, you're losing yourself. You're literally losing yourself. And I was like, I'm, I'm just trying. So me going out, I'm like, well, maybe it'll make me feel better. And then the next day we met my parents like 12 and I was fine. But I was like, I'm not the one that really needs to do any (laughs) impressing today. My parents know who I am. So I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. But yeah, I did go to the club. But the night before he met my parents. This is so real because if you had had the space, like there's something to be said about when someone in you're in a relationship with is consistently bringing up doubts Mm -hmm. and you're constantly putting out fires Mm -hmm. and you don't have the space to voice any of your own concerns or any space to figure out if you have any, because you got to put out every fire every day. Mm -hmm. If that wasn't occurring, do you feel like you would have had maybe more space to be like, this is really making me feel like shit or like, this is really bad for me too. But I'm always trying to talk about your experience. Yeah. I mean, just our setup in general, we were just always, I don't want to say forced, but we were just in positions where we always had to like communicate. Right. Um, I mean, you are filming lots of hours. So you're just overly communicating. And sometimes we just wanted to just sit in silence and not that that is, um, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's just sometimes we just, you just need space from your significant other. And not that I didn't want to be around him, but I think certain people just need their battery to be charged and interacting with people. And that's me. I don't like interacting with people, but for so long. So I don't know. I feel like with, if if given different circumstances, things might've been different, but I'm not really sure. I think also he was a different person in a different headspace at that time as well, which is with what he was dealing with. So 
That's completely fair. And the onus isn't on you, which is something that I also wanted to ask later. But at the reunion, and maybe just even in general online, we can generalize it too. But do you feel like there's been so much onus put on women? Like kind of like finding fault at the women when a lot of the men really caused a lot of the conflict this season? Yeah. Um, I feel like we're forced to be the punching bags mm-hmm. of whatever they're dealing with, like, we just got to take it, like, whatever they're dealing with, we just have to take it. And um, it was just, it, it was just really unfortunate, because the strength that a lot of the women held, and I don't think, a, you know, this being an international show, or, you know, different cities, states, different cultures, they're saying this, in the DMV, women are very independent here. There is a certain caliber of women here. And that's why you see, you know, Monica who's saying, this is the type of bag I want. Monica also makes hundreds of thousand dollars. She can afford the bag herself. Mm -hmm. She flies first class. So of course she wants somebody on her level. It's not that she's being a, you know, um, a gold digger or anything. Right. Just like, Mm -hmm. you know, with Hannah, with her demanding things, Hannah's been on her own since she was 18. Mm -hmm. So for her asking Nick, her, she might've not had the best delivery, but her asking Nick, how are you with like paying bills? These are questions you have to ask. So it's like, I feel like women, a lot of the women mm-hmm. in this were just kind of looked at like, oh, but you have a man that wants to marry you. Like, kind of like. Isn't that good enough? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And right. It's like, no, no, I no. can just be by myself. If this, if this is the, or if these are the options, I'm good. Um, So like, I don't know. I just feel like the women just had to deal with a lot that it's unfortunate because that's just what. DC dating is. And I feel like that's a lot of what reality TV is. Like, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. sometimes I watch and I'm like, there's been a couple seasons where I'm like, totally, men were were held very accountable. Mm -hmm. But a lot of seasons, there's lots of women villains who are not the villains at all. And we're simply Mm -hmm. edited to look like it. And after you find out their story, it's always pretty shocking. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's a trending theme. Mm -hmm. I want to ask quickly, when you guys have your second disagreement that we saw on Mm -hmm. camera Mm -hmm. that's ultimately when you guys break up and tim leaves the apartment now Mm -hmm. keep it i'm like keeping in mind that he tried to leave the experience once already Mm -hmm. okay so you were you were balancing that and navigating that when you guys are having this conversation we know as viewers that sometimes you have to recreate a conversation that's already been had off camera. Did mm-hmm. you have any inkling this was coming or was it truly food out of the microwave? Let's sit down and talk shocked. I had no idea. And that scene was not, we had no scenes that we had to recreate. So when people have said that, I'm like, well, maybe that was your experience, mm. but all of our scenes were raw Live. right right then and there. Um, I honestly thought we were going to, I was walking into us discussing what we had been talking about, which right. is the conversation that we had at dinner or, you know, where do we stand as like, you know, our emotions with each other. Not that I was being dumped over a nap. Like mm-hmm. I, I literally didn't know I was walking into a breakup and it didn't, it just didn't seem, I didn't get that vibe at all. And then once I sat down, I'm like, oh wait, this was definitely not what I thought it was. (laughs) So you were as confused as us because I have, I have literally tried to take notes. I've tried to rewatch and I can't even come up with a reasoning for the breakup or any context. We had problems, not going to negate that at all. Right. We definitely had our issues. I, again, just didn't think our issues held the weight of a breakup when we went into it with so much heaviness. You know, he had given me his deceased sister's bracelet and said, I want to bring you into my family and give my fam- my parents another daughter. And what they didn't show is he had given me his sister's hat the day before that. So I knew he was giving me something else the next day that was going to be even heavier. Mm-hmm. And I was just like so much weight, so much emotion that went into this. And yeah, some people can call it trauma bonding. Probably was a lot of trauma bonding in that. I'm not going to negate that either. But I thought with us ending things on such a surface level with such a nap, dishes, you for it didn't text me back. I just, it didn't make sense because I'm like, I, I was like begging him to give me, you got to give me something else. And that's what I was looking for at the reunion. Like, just say, just say we weren't compatible. 
I would have been like, look, I just don't think we're compatible. I've tried. I feel like we just don't see eye to eye and we just need to end things now because I'm not going to say yes. I would have respected him 10 times more if he said that, but trying to push a narrative on I'm lazy, I'm, I don't clean, I, I don't communicate was just BS because all I've been doing is overly communicating. I had cleaned the entire apartment before that. I like did both of our laundries. Like I had been doing everything that he had asked me to. We're talking about one time I didn't do the dishes. One time I took a nap before I had to go to work. That's just not fair. So when you guys filmed this and then a whole year passes before Mm -hmm. we see it, Mm -hmm. but you filmed this and had this conversation Mm -hmm. at any point between now and the reunion, did you have an inkling that Tim would still be in a space where he perceived you as a liar and was going to go on social media? Like, was there any apology for how he ended things with you ever? Nothing. No. No. And all of the cast had asked him. I know all of the guys had asked him like, So what was it? And they're just like, he would always just say it was good until it wasn't. That was always the answer. I would, people would tell me, yeah, we've asked him. And he just says it was good until it wasn't. And that's it. I I don't know. And I still, it bothered me a lot that not once did he try to reach out and me, I guess I can be a little prideful, but if you tell me you never want to hear from me again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go out of my way to to contact you. Same. Um, And so for me to just not get any of that and even through like, you know, the grapevine and our group of friends, I had heard that he was questioning, like considering, should I hit up Alex before the reunion? I just want to make sure we're okay. He talked about it, never happened. So I don't know. Concept of a plan, not, and didn't, didn't, got it. And just didn't happen. And I just found it just odd. Like Mm -hmm. I've never been in a relationship like that where we end things and they don't at least reach out once, especially when it ends like, like that, like nobody reached out. We haven't, we went a whole year. That is so shocking. It really makes me wonder, you know, and I guess we'll never know what, what was the Canon event? It was he feeling so emasculated by a couple of comments that he couldn't get past them. Was it the nap? Are things a big deal to Tim that possibly aren't for others? Yeah. Well, um, I, I have one theory in my mind that I've always held on to which I think, and I don't want to put this on him, right? but it's just something that I experienced with him. But when we were planning the, like our week, our week was, I think it was like Wednesday, we were going to meet his friends Thursday or no Friday. He was going to meet my friends. Um, and Saturday he met my family. And then Sunday he, I met his family. When we planned our whole week, Um, I remember we were trying to figure out when we were going to meet his parents and we could not figure out because they lived in Georgia and my parents, we could be flexible because they live here. So when trying to find the schedule, I remember the reason why they were the last step is because his parents drove his sister's truck, which I thought, and I still think to this day was the most inconsiderate thing he could have asked for his parents to do. He wanted his parent, his mom to drive his sister's truck and then his dad to drive his car and then drive back. We could have booked a flight. I could have booked a flight for them, but he wanted his sister's truck bad. His sister had just passed in May. You're asking your mother to drive her now past daughter's truck 10 hours by herself because the husband is now driving his car. And I think because they, his mom pushed against that idea for so long, she did not want to do it. And by the time he was like, no, you have to drive my truck. I need my truck. Like literally like begged. And by the time he finally got his truck, I think he was like, okay, I'm good. I don't need to do this anymore. I got what I wanted. That was the last thing I needed. His parents were never going to come up here if they didn't have to. And because it's like, no, you have to meet my fiance. We could have flew them out. Like it's what, an $80 ticket? Like it's Georgia. And no, he he was so set on it. And I'm just like, how could you make your mother do that? And really shocking. Like I, I kind of can't imagine like driving all that way and being reminded the entire time. And it's crazy because that's not part of, you know what I mean? Like that's not part Mm -hmm. of anything that we see, like, like him requesting that they do that or really the relationship with his mom where he kind of goes against her boundaries as well, because she's clearly unclear with this, but it's too important 
to him, you know. Yeah. Um, Which I don't just want... goes back to his way or the highway. Like exactly, things being on him, his timeline, and when he needs them. Yeah. Well, switching gears a little bit, I'm going to talk about the reunion. Um, I want to first acknowledge the fact that I mean the dress laid, like the dress was gorgeous. <laughs> I need. Yeah. I need to, I hope you do a TikTok series about like what your inspiration was, how long it took you to make, like, because I'm dying for it. Yeah. Is that the first dress that you've made and worn? Like, is that the first thing you've styled and then worn? No, I've been sewing since I was 12. So yeah, I went to like, again, nothing was shown on this, but I went to fashion school, um, work in fashion industry. My business used to be prom dresses and homecoming dresses when I was, I like, I had a business in high school and then it carried on into college. And I was known as like the girl who makes all the prom dresses. So I would just do dresses as like my side hustle. And then um, I got a little bit out of it for a little bit when I was bartending. And then I slowly got back into it uh, right around COVID. And then now I'm fully getting back into it. So yeah. that's so iconic. That's so <laughs> cool that you were literally like the local dressmaker for the for the prom. And it's like if you if like. You, someone couldn't get a dress from you then like you feel like the like I don't know like not cool like, you feel you feel super uncool I think I had like 10 dresses by my senior year like I did for like three other high schools <laughs> I cannot believe that you had that much business and that you were able to do all of that at some point like even just send to me personally like I'm kind of dying to see a couple of the prom dresses like if anybody has any yeah, old photos like I, I, I want to see Facebook. <laughs> dying for that <laughs> Um, is there anything else that you, that you wish that we could have seen before we talk about the reunion, um, like during the season, like are there any other moments that you wish we got to see? Just more of my personality. <laughs> you have just, a great personality. Thank you. Everyone thinks I'm so dry and boring and me. And I'm like, no, um, we laughed a lot. We, I had so much fun, um, until I just wasn't having fun, but right. you know, it, it, my personality just wasn't showing at all, unfortunately. Um, when we get to the reunion, it's clear that you and Brittany have like some sort of friendship. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm I'm kind of dying to know at the time of the reunion, who were you closest with on the cast? I was really close with Monica, Ashley, and then Brittany. I think those are the three girls. Um, Taylor, I was very close with in the pods, but not so much like post filming. Um, Marissa and I we weren't Marissa and Hannah. I wasn't really close with in the pods. Like I had my moments with them, right? But maybe near close to airing the the show, I want to say like the month before I got closer with Hannah and Marissa. At yeah. the reunion, we only see like an hour and twenty minutes of of what you guys have filmed. Yeah. How long were you actually there? If you're able to say, I want to say five or six hours. Whole okay, yeah. And yours and Tim's conversation, we see Nick and Vanessa sort of cut that conversation. Was, was it a... Upset. Okay, yeah. How did you feel about that first? I was I was really upset because... And not that it was, a, you know, against Nick and Vanessa for that. Because to be fair, the conversation was going nowhere. Right. Um, We were just bickering at that point. I just felt like there was still so much that needed to be said. And I just wish it had been directed better in a sense of, okay, let's move on to this. What about these questions instead of just cutting us off completely? Um, I just feel like there was still more questions to be asked, um, things to get to the bottom of, but we were just so set on where I was the night before I met his family and, you know, he was trying to love me and I apparently wasn't. And, you know, it was the feelings, not what actually, you know, happened here, here, and here, you know? So it was just, it just showed like there was still a lot of resentment, a lot of anger, which I didn't understand that either. I don't know why he was so upset, but yeah. It was kind of shocking, like, because he still implied that you were lying, like, at the reunion. You know what I mean? Like, and even posted on his social media, like, photos of the reunion with, like, the Pinocchio emoji, like, saying that right. you're this lying. Right, like to see a liar lying. I saw that. Yeah. Lying about what? I had more facts. And every time I spit, up, spit out facts, he would go back to, but you called me this. Or mm -hmm. he would go back to, oh, I was trying to love you. Or, but I just didn't get the respect. You're not 
stay focused on the topic at hand and pay attention to what we're saying. This is what happened. This is what I said. How do you feel about that? Or why are you upset about this? And it was just like, dismiss, dismiss, dismiss. And I just, we, we weren't getting anywhere. It was just so focused on how he felt in the moment. It's just like, okay. All right. So this is one of those situations where regardless of what he says, you can at least feel settled knowing that you guys were not compatible. Yeah. And honestly, that's probably what it boils down to in his yeah. mind. He probably mm -hmm. doesn't want to say that. So he'd rather say, well, you did X, Y, and Z because there's no onus on him for saying that. And he can then blame you. Um, and we can look at that and say, well, that's your that's your story to tell to whoever will listen, but we know the truth, which yeah. you have told multiple times. Um, mm -hmm. And hopefully he changes the tune of his story someday. I don't know. That's just super I unfortunate. <laughs> I don't think he will either to be, I think that's. Yeah. I, I just think it would have just been nice if we could have just been I... able to have some closure, but we, we didn't get the closure. And I, I just wanted us both to be able to have the space to take accountability on something. And I will definitely take accountability on things that I did. I, and I said that even on our breakup, I don't think it's just you. And I don't think it's just me. I think it's both of us, but I think we have to, I don't think it's fair for us to both be like, Oh, but you did this and you did that. It's, it doesn't have to be a finger pointing thing. I didn't like that. You did this. You didn't like that. I did that. Okay. That's not part of our love language. Your love language is listening. I don't really resonate with that um, because I've never heard of somebody's love language be listening. I thought, well, I thought the last thing that was really ironic about his claims was that he claimed that you went on to become a TikTok star and like, okay, first of all, he's been more active on social media than you arguably so specifically about the show. So active. So like, that's a fact. He is so active. So I think it's so like mind boggling that he's like, oh, she wants to be a TikTok star. Okay. I'm like the TikTok star is in the room with us and it's you. <laughs> it's like Spider-Man. Like, no. Yeah. But 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 I think what he's upset about is that it's not going, sorry to say, it's not going in his favor. He's mm -hmm. doing it in a sense that he's just trying to point the finger and 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 do all these things on social media. And it just makes him look like he's whining and it doesn't actually help his case, whatever. With with the text messages, what did we learn from the text messages? absolutely nothing those nothing. text messages literally said nothing nothing i don't know what you were going with what that my room that just confirmed that my room was a mess okay i don't mm -hmm. know what you were like what are we getting yeah, at? what was that about too like there was like random shade like at your at your living like oh and she claimed that she cleaned like before i got here like it this was is clearly it. a mess so what, I know. what are you talking about like <laughs> It just okay. confused me. It was confusing. So I, I don't, I don't know. I think he's just trying to make it seem like, well, she wants to be the one that wants to be famous. And it's like, I'm just trying to make light of being dragged. I'm literally being dragged online about, and you were. oh, she's lazy. Oh, she's dirty. Oh, she's this. So I make a TikTok about my messy apartment. I make a TikTok about me taking a nap. I make a TikTok about eating food. Like I'm just, I'm laughing about it because yes. what else can I do in this situation? That's literally it. <laughs> That's what you can do. If you don't laugh, you cry. I think it bothers him that you're moving through this. I think that it's also super unfair to not acknowledge that every person, I mean, we're on season six or I think this was seven. This was season yeah, seven, seven of Love is Blind, okay? Mm -hmm. At season seven, every person who enters Love is Blind and their journeys are followed are going mm -hmm. to leave with the platform. That's not like a like a falsity like it's like at some point everyone will leave and someone will people will care about what happened because we just watched you for however many weeks so it's like him acting like you did something that he didn't but yet he's on this show and posting on social media afterwards it's just a self-fulfilling prophecy of like doesn't add up it's just like if that's what you want to do on your social media by all means do it and i'm not gonna knock you for doing it do what makes you happy but don't try to shade me for trying to make a, make light of the situation. That's literally it. Especially when you're not defending me at all. And especially since you're not posting the text messages and like making him look badly. Like you at could all. just be like, here's the receipts. Like, and you're not. There's so many there. When I tell you, there's so many things that I could post and I'm yeah. not going to because exactly. what would that prove? Mm -hmm. Point blank period. At the end of the day, we're not compatible. Let's move on. That's it. Agreed. Literally it. <laughs> so let me, I'll end with this. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share? Um, 
Just that I have a clothing line coming out. <laughs> Shut up. What's it called? Can you tell us the name? Yeah, Lexara. L-E-X-A-R-A. I'm so excited. What, like, everything? Like, what, what kind of line? So, everyone's been asking for the reunion dress, so I'm going to come up with something similar. Because I'm probably not the exact same thing. And then a whole collection in February that I've been working on, so... I'm dying. No big deal. I'm a February <laughs> birthday. Like, okay. So I'll be right, buying right. something course, for February 9th. Yeah. Yes. I'm an Aquarius. Like I have to. Ashley's an Aquarius too, by the yeah. way. I do know yeah. that. Yeah. So and Hannah, she was... and Nick. <laughs> Hannah is too. Hannah and Nick. Mm -hmm. Oh, Nick is the epitome of a male Aquarius. But now I know that Hannah's an Aquarius. Oh, and I'm an Aquarius. Did I and say you know that? The crazy thing is Ashley and Nick have the exact identical chart. They have the same planet placements and everything. It's, it's nuts. Men yeah. are so different. When you apply a, like any astrological sign and put it on a man, it'll it'll express itself so differently. It's yeah. so like, interesting. I don't like Leo men, but I love Leo women. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm dating a Leo. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's the duality. Love him, hate him, mostly right. love him. You know. Um. Actually, I'm I'm like obsessed with Leo. So if you're a Leo, I'll probably love you. Right. <laughs> um. We'll touch base around February and March and do like a little <laughs> bit of a follow up. Um, please go ahead and plug your socials so that everyone can follow you. Totally uh, uh, hacked on TikTok right now. Hopefully we it got hacked this morning. <laughs> it's okay. Hopefully I get it back. I'm hoping. But everything, as childish as his name is, everything is pretty little birdie. Because my friends used to say I heard from a pretty little bird. So pretty... P-R-E-T-T-Y, Lil, like Lil Wayne, L-I-L, Birdie, B-Y-R-D-I-E. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Go follow Alex. Um, with your TikTok, that's insane. TikTok, I hope Instagram, that you get it back. Twitter, yeah. Thank you so much for making time in your day to talk with thank me. This was you. so much fun, and okay. I feel like I learned so much. Yes, thank you so much, Leah. I'm so excited. <laughs>